All right, I'll start sharing my screen now in a bit. All right, if you can see my screen, kindly indicate in the chat box that you can see my screen. If you can see my screen, kindly indicate in the chat box that you can see my screen. All right, it's okay. All right, I know some of us have encountered the world, the world, uh, cryptocurrency or digital assets as the case may be. And then some of us have encountered things that look like crypto, but they are not necessarily crypto in themselves because they are platforms built around crypto in order to um, more like pyramid schemes built around crypto. So for the fact that those pyramid, pyramid schemes are built around crypto doesn't necessarily make it legit or make it crypto in itself so i want to be sure that every one of you is hearing me so i can proceed um okay hope you guys can hear me hope you can hear me ntokozisi Okay, all right, all of you can hear me, all right, okay. Okay, fine, all right. I'll, propose, I'll proceed now. So cryptocurrency are digital assets. They are simply digital assets. You know the way you treat your land, when you acquire your land, you invest money or you bring up money to buy your land. That's how you should treat cryptocurrencies because on the, on the large scale, they are digital assets. Now, cryptocurrencies are just simply money involved. You know, when people try to separate currency from money in itself, that's where the error starts. Cryptocurrency, it was just a long time coming. Money has simply evolved. Every single thing that you know of, from trade by butter, to coins, to metal, to gold, to uh, paper currency, to ATM cards, to electronic money, that's PayPal, Payoneer, and the likes. And today we have cryptocurrencies. And if you notice in the evolution of money, this money has been evolving to meet the need of man. Like every time they meet a challenge where money is concerned, money will evolve, humans will evolve money so that it can meet the need of man. Like Chiba Bata came in in order to um, solve the need of getting what you don't have. But in the long run, it became obvious that Chibi Bata cannot meet, you can't hold to, um, beans or rice for years. They will spoil and they are bulky to transport. So Chibi Bata evolved into metallic coins, into gold and all that calories. And even that had its own challenges. And eventually, Money evolved to paper currency. But when paper currency came in, they brought, it, came, it came with regulation. If you notice between the time when there was gold, when there was calories and all those things, we didn't need regulation. We didn't even need a bank. We didn't need a central party, a central regulating party. But as soon as paper currency came into being, we, we needed a regulatory body. And that was where central bank came into, came into the picture. Now, they regulate how much should be in circulation, what valuation should be on each paper currency. This means that at every given time, they know the am amount that you have. But it has its own limitation in the sense that if I'm in Nigeria and someone is in the US, I can't use Naira in the US. I have to convert my own fiat currency to a currency that works in the US and vice versa. So, and then, this also have its open plenty issues. And today, uh, a man named Satoshi Nakamoto, which was the man that hypothetically started the whole cryptocurrency journey. In 2008, the man wrote the technical paper that is backing, backing Bitcoin, which was the first digital currency to exist. You can find out all this detail 
about uh, uh, Bitcoin. When you install the, the app called CoinMarketCap, you see the history of Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency that you want to know about. They are listed, really listed there and you can visit their website and then you find out more about that cryptocurrency. So every information, it's not as if these things are strange or there's no information, enough information about them out there. So you need to understand that these digital assets, number one of them was Bitcoin and then followed by Ethereum in 2015. Bitcoin moved from less than a dollar to hundred dollar and today the worth of one Bitcoin is 10K plus, it's about 10 to 10, four today. And just simply buying crypto 10 years ago and holding it would have made you lots and lots and lots of money. Now, digital assets have the capacity to make you rich, make you wealthy, but you need knowledge and you need the right information. There are lots of, there are a bunch of information out there that are not worth, they're not worth your attention. And at the same time, if you, for you, for you to thrive in this, for you to thrive in this space, you need the power of information and the power of knowledge and timing. Timing is very important because today, Bitcoin can be 10 to today. And you wake up tomorrow morning and find out Bitcoin hit 12,000. And then by the time you wake up, or by the time you're like, oh, it hit 12,000, and then it's back to 10. That's how volatile the market is. So the point of it is all is to being able to take advantage of the volatility of the market. The market is always moving up and down. The prices are never, are never the same. Like, look at, look, at, look at right now. This Bitcoin, Bitcoin was uh, 10, 10 to in the morning. It got 10, 4, and then now it's 10, 6, 9, 5. That's almost 10, 7. And then look at Ethereum. Ethereum 2 has moved up a bit. And this has increased. Like, the market has been a bit nice today compared to, compared to the, the last few days. We've been in a bearish market. So what's going to help you in crypto is the fact is your knowledge. There's nothing like the real thing. All this, um, you know, refer one person, get seven persons or whatever, or bring 3K, bring 5K. That's not the real deal. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Tron, and every other cryptocurrency, they're all cryptocurrencies. But then, just like every other kind of money, people can build pyramid schemes around them create platforms whereby you deposit cryptocurrencies and you earn cryptocurrencies back because cryptocurrencies are money. So you can use cryptocurrencies to pay for goods and services. So these cryptocurrencies have come to stay. They have come to stay. But what's going to really help you is knowledge. You can start from the most basic and then you grow up. And then you don't stop learning because every day there's a new information that can give you extra cash. Remember, it doesn't stay at a position. So what I want you to know that is that cryptocurrency is their digital assets and they're just simply money evolved. And the technology that is the intrinsic part of this um, digital asset is what we call the blockchain technology. Blockchain technology is the technology, the intrinsic technology of these digital assets. Now, these cryptocurrencies are classified in the various ways. They have different classification because of their roles they are doing in the space. Some cryptocurrencies are just for, they are just for currency sake, pure currency. That's like Bitcoin, we have Bitcoin, some as pure currency. You can use it to pay for goods and services, and that's all. But this is like Ethereum. Ethereum and, um, Ethereum and Tron, they are platform currencies in the sense that you can build on them. But at the same time, you can also use them to pay for goods and services because you can convert them back to Bitcoin. Now, that being said, I'm going to show you how to, this is a typical OKEx exchange. Remember what I said? You have to, to learn how to do this thing, start doing it. Normally, I would charge some amount of money to my premium group, but I'm giving this opportunity between now and Sunday for people to get access to the premium group and then the door is closed. So you either make take number two option in the, in the group or take number three option, but then you find yourself in one group or the other and make sure you use the link to sign up. So the first thing first, first thing to do when you want to start your crypto trading journey 
is to buy Bitcoin. Now, Bitcoin is a pure currency, pure cryptocurrency. And then Bitcoin is used to trade other currencies. Every other kind of cryptocurrency can be converted back to Bitcoin and back to Ethereum and back to USDT. Of course, I'll explain what USDT means. There's another classification of cryptocurrencies that are called stable coins. These are the coins that resist the fluctuations of the market. No matter how volatile the market is, their valuation does not drop and their valuation does not increase. And one of that, one of the um, stable coins is known as popular that because it maintains the same valuation as dollar. If dollar is one dollar, US theta remains one dollar. It does not go up, it does not go down. So whenever the market is misbehaving, you know, shaky, 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 anyhow, anyhow, you just have to convert your assets to USDT so you can maintain the dollar valuation of your digital assets. Take note of that. Whenever you, you perceive that the market is going to go bearish for a while, you just convert your digital assets to USDT. That way, the valuation of your portfolio will not drop. It will maintain the dollar value. And then, you stay. so that's another class. You can find a video on my YouTube channel. I did a video explaining how you can convert your Bitcoin to USDT and vice versa. So the first thing to do in your crypto trading journey is to buy Bitcoin. Now, on OKEx, you can buy Bitcoin directly from OKEx using this media button, buy or sell. Uh, loading, 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 loading. You click buy or sell, and then you see the payment gateway where you can use your card. Use your card to pay to buy Bitcoin. You use a, you buy anyone you want USDT, BTC, ETH, or Litecoin. You can buy, just take for example. can go basta card or visa card then you know it takes you to banza which is the payment gateway and the fee is really 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 cheap or if you have a challenge is doing going through that way you can buy from someone there are peer-to-peer -peer sellers everywhere you can buy from someone or you can use luno you can buy directly from luno it's just a luno has some extra charges luno charges can be very expensive more than this but if you have actually challenges with your card, buying with your card from here, you can buy from Luno and deposit here. And then you get ready for trading. So wait, they just, after you bought directly from here or you bought from Luno or you bought from someone that is selling, then you are ready to trade. Now, there's a little bit of tweak with this uh, particular exchange. When you fund, when you deposit, Okay, let, us, let me take you through how you deposit. Let us say, for example, now you couldn't buy directly and you, you want to deposit. All you have to do is come to assets. When you come to assets, now you can see there are three different tabs here. There is funding above. There's funding here, there's trading, and there is order. Now, under funding, we have, when you deposit, the money you deposited will appear in your funding balance. Because sometimes when you deposit money there or your BTC or your USDT, you, you would think that you wonder, ah, I can't trade though, you cannot find your balance. It's because it's in the funding balance. So what you should do is, first of all, you click deposit. You click deposit and then you select BTC. When you select BTC, you copy the address and you send it to whoever. If it's Luno you're buying from, you post it on Luno and you send to that address. And then if it is um, someone is selling, is selling to you, you send the address to the person and you then you receive the Bitcoin. Same thing, is, same thing as if you are buying Ethereum instead or if you're buying USDT instead. So all you have to do is just click deposit and then you click Bitcoin, select BTC, which is the token you want to deposit. And then you copy the address and send it to the person. Mind you, every exchange have unique addresses to each cryptocurrency. Now, the address, deposit address of BTC on OKEx is different from
from deposit address on every other exchange. So you don't mix it up because if you mix it up, you are going to lose your funds. Now, let me be sure that you can hear me. Okay. All right. Moving on. So um, you make sure that the address you're sending, you don't carry Bitcoin and send to Ethereum. You will lose your funds. Because one thing you should be very careful of in the case is that you can't afford to be distracted. You have to be sure that you're sending something to, sending whatever you're sending to where you want to send it to. There is no room for mistakes because one feature of this space is that it's immutable in the sense that nothing you do on the exchange is reversible. Everything is irreversible. So the, you make sure that you just make sure that your deposit is your deposit Bitcoin to Bitcoin, Ethereum to Ethereum, and you don't mistakenly just because there's nobody you can call to reverse it for you. So you are careful. And that is just also note that this space is a very risky space. So you secure your account, um, Google Authenticator. So the next thing to do is after you've deposited your BTC is to now you transfer, you go to transfer. Let me go back again. You go to transfer. When you click on transfer, if it's USDT you funded with, you move from funding to spot account. If not, you click USDT and then select Bitcoin. And then you click transfer all and you click confirm. After you click confirm, everything will move from funding to trading then you are ready to trade. Now, this, uh, this is the trading part. You come to sports, you come to sports, you see your BTC in the sports part. You see your BTC in the sports part. Because if you, if you go, if you go to trading, it will take you to P2P. To click to P2P. So you just um, click sports and then you show your sports balance. So the thing to do now is after you phone it with BTC, then you're ready to trade. I will send a signal that I can use and try out the money that you funded to the group. So what you should do is you come to markets to enter your first trade. This is how to buy and sell your crypto to enter your first trade you come to market and then you go to your search button let's take for example now i give you a signal a typical signal that i i will give you will contain the name of the coin and the price you can buy buy at and the price you can sell at so let me just say for example now i told you to buy okb okb btc what i mean by okb btc is that like i said Bitcoin is a currency they use to trade other coins. So you're using BTC to buy OKB. So when you go to the market and use your Naira to try to buy a pair of shoes, and when you buy a pair of shoes, you're exchanging your money with the pair of shoes. You're giving the person money to get your shoes. So in this case, you're giving BTC to get the coin you want to buy. And remember, the spot trading works by you buying low and selling high. You're buying low, you're selling high. So after you um, you type the coin that I'll give you in a signal, you type OKB and then you select OKB BTC because you selected OKB BTC because Bitcoin is what you funded your account with. So you click OKB BTC. After clicking it, then you click buy. When you click buy, now, the signal I'm going to give you will contain a price, the entry price. There's something you have to note at this point. There are two ways to calculate the valuation of a cryptocurrency. That's what we call the dollar valuation, valuation and Satoshi valuation. Why do you call it Satoshi valuation? Satoshi came from the name of the person that hypothetically invented Bitcoin. So, Every Satoshi value has an equivalent dollar value. What do I mean? 
let me use my let me use my whiteboard um okay let me see if i can use my whiteboard um now this is my whiteboard now a typical satoshi price or a typical price of a cryptocurrency is always in eight decimal places that is zero point zero 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 is it it's yeah eight so zero point eight zeros that is a typical price in satoshi and it has an equivalent value in dollar which is zero dollar now one dollar in one dollar in cryptocurrency is zero point zero 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 one this is one dollar in cryptocurrency this is the price in satoshi this is price of one dollar in satoshi then ten dollars is zero point zero zero one this is ten dollar and then hundred dollar is zero point zero yeah one and one thousand dollars is zero point one so for every price that you see you see in satoshi it has an equivalent dollar value so that you understand the numbers when you see the numbers so normally when, it, when the thing that comes you will not see the first four zeros in front you only see the whole numbers so just in case you see a signal that is showing that is showing um, four numbers or three numbers, so you understand what it means. If it's, you're just seeing two numbers in a typical signal, it means that there are six zeros in front of the two numbers. If you're seeing three numbers, it means that there are five zeros in front of three numbers. If you're seeing four zeros, uh, four numbers, it means that there are four zeros in front of the four numbers. So every Satoshi price has an equivalent dollar value. Now look at this place now. This is a dollar, it's a Satoshi value and a dollar value. The price of this coin now is at $6, $6.54. Now look at this. Remember what I told you about where you can find your $1. So this is $6, that's 0 0.0006139, which is equivalent to $6.54. So every coin has a Satoshi value and an equivalent dollar value. So now, if I give you a signal to buy this coin at this price, at this price, which is buy it at, what, what you will see in the signal is buy at 6,139 Satoshi. We prefer to use Satoshi value than dollar value. That look, dollar value just like an equivalent. So it means that you have to come to, um, you look at that, that's the market price. That's the current market price. This one up here is the current market price. So what you should do is you, you pick up, you, there are two ways to enter this, this trade. First of all, you use either, either limit, buy, limit buy order or market buy order. Now, don't forget about all, this other, all, all these other types here. Forget about all these other types here. For now, you need to know limit by order or market by order. What is a limit by order? A limit by order means that you are going to edit the price to be in accordance with this price you're seeing the signal. But if I'm going to use market by order, market by order say is that you're telling, you're saying that whatever the price is at the market right now, you're willing to buy at that price. So we limit order, you are buying with the, you are choosing the price yourself, you're editing the price. Maybe when you, when you, what you saw in the signal that you will get is buy between 6130 and 6150. Now you, and you, you came here and you saw that the current market price is 6146 right now. 
and the price range, the entry price range is 6130 and 6150. What you should do, what you should do is that you have two options. Either you use limit order or use limit buy order. Uh, sorry, market buy order. If you're using limit buy order, it's it's that the in the buy range. So all you have to do is you you come to this buy, this buy and sell wall. This is your is your buy wall. Now the sell wall are those people that are, that are ready to sell their orders. They want to sell to you. And then the buy wall are people that are willing to buy. So you are in the buy part, which means you're buying from someone that is selling. So what you should do is that you just select the lowest one order there so that it can fill up fast fast currently the market price is 6140 but the order in the order book is 6141 so you select most maybe you have like uh 10k worth of bitcoin in your balance you select 100 percent we select 100 percent everything you have in your balance to buy buy everything to buy it up much more maybe you have like 20k you have like 30k i want to split it to half you use 50 percent to enter this particular trade and leave the remaining 50 50 percent for when you want to enter and you want to enter on that trade so that's how to buy and then maybe if you don't want to go through the hassle of looking at the market price to see if it's to see if it's in um, um accordance with this, to the signal you use limit sorry use market buy order and then just click 100 percent or 50 percent as the case may be and then click buy now in order for you to sell what i always advise people in my premium is that I always advise that they set their sell targets immediately. Now, the market is a very volatile place. Most likely, you might not be there when your price will go up. So in order to maximize your trade, in order to maximize your profit, always set your sell targets. Always set your sell targets. So as soon as you bought, come and set your sell. Click sell and then you must use limit sell order. So you click limit sell order. And you bought at 6141. And you want to sell at 7,000. Sat. So you just edit this and say, when the price gets to 7,000, sat, then you bought at $6, you want to say at $7. That 7,000 sat, you put 700. Zero, zero which means you're selling at 7,000 sat. And then you click 100% of what you bought, and then you click sell. What you're saying is that the price is currently at 6,141. If the price gets to 7,000, it should help you sell off and collect both your profit and your capital. Everything will be converted back to Bitcoin. So you can use what you got to re-enter another trade, or you can separate your profit from that. So wherever, but tomorrow I will teach you how to uh, some profit profit taking strategies, how to maximize your profit. So this is simply how to buy and sell. And then once you should know that there are different kinds of, of course, there are different kinds of trading. There are what we call spot trading. There's margin trading. There is futures. There is uh, options and all that. The most, with spot trading, you can earn money, you can make passive income. So even if you don't bother your head with the rest of the kind of trading, you can focus on spot trading and you can maximize it and make money from it. So there is spot trading, like on this one now, on this interface now, you're seeing spot and margin trading, and then there is chore, which has to do with futures. This has to do with first. So here you're seeing sports or margin. You see that this interface is different. Margin has to do with leverage. You're leveraging in the market, whether the market is going down, you're leveraging. 
So you're taking both advantage of, of both ends of the market, high or low, bearish or bullish. Now, a typical, this is a typical trading chart. This is a typical trading and chart interface, just in, see, in case you see something like this. This green and red stuff are called Japanese candles. The green one means bullish. In the market is looking well, it's going well. The red shows bearish in the sense that some people are trying to, um, the market is not, it's going down. It's going down. So, and the candle now, I've seen this candle now, for example. This candle now, let me use this very tall candle now. That very tip, the tip of the candle is showing you the closing price. The tip, the tip at the, the of a green candle, the, the lowest tip is showing the opening price. Then between the lowest part of the body of the candle and the highest part of the body of the candle is the low price and the high, uh, it's low price and high price. And then the last tip is showing the closing price for the day. Because this is showing you a one day candle. Each candle here represents a day. You can change the candle to show you maybe 15 minutes. This is, let me take it to 15 minutes. But this is another are part of the class. So I'm just trying to show you, this is 15 minutes chart. This is 15 minutes chart. This one hour chart. And then this four hours chart. And this is one day. So this is like towards, for you to know this chart, that's like going to technical analysis that. So there are, in crypto, what moves the market? Sentiment moves the market a lot. So have to really, you have to pay attention to the news. So first of all, let me not so debate so much. Tomorrow I'll continue with you know, the um, maximizing your profits. And then I'll, I'll show you how to use how to use less to earn more for those of you that's going to fund, um, fund your account so that you can sub maximize this is OKEX, all called the OKEX jump start. I'll show you how to use OKEX jump start to make extra crypto. Even if the market is down or anything, you will still be making extra crypto. So another thing you should note about is um, cryptocurrency function, functions with what we call consensus mechanism. That's an advanced class. But consensus mechanism is like some kind of sort of agreement on the blockchain. The other purpose of consensus mechanism, we have um, proof of stake, proof of work, and all that, proof of authority, and the likes. Now, proof of stake, proof of work is, uh, let me leave it for the advanced class, or I'll leave it for another class. But I want you to note that cryptocurrency, digital assets, that function with technology known as blockchain technology. And these cryptocurrencies are decentralized, which means no government can control it. No government owns it. What governments try to, government try to do is they try to regulate the companies that create them. That's all. But the funny thing is that the currencies in itself cannot be regulated because nobody, there's no central government. It's very decentralized. And then another feature of crypto is that it's borderless in the sense that I can use Bitcoin US. If I go to Paris, Bitcoin. If I go to Rome, I can use Bitcoin. It's borderless. It's permissionless. I don't need the permission of the government and the permission of anybody to use it. In fact, I can stay in the comfort of my room and do whatever I want to do. And then nobody will know exactly the amounts that's been moving up and down in my phone. So that is how but that is how permissionless it is. And it's very decentralized in the sense that there is no point of failure. You know, the central system has a point of failure. You can easily attack the head and everything crumbles. But in this technology surrounding that, that this cryptocurrency is built on, it's decentralized. So there's no central point of failure. Every, the network is spread across nodes nodes from one node to the other from one node to the other and each node contains a copy of the blockchain so what you see in node a you see node b you see node c you see node it's like that so even if you remove one node from the others the, the rest will reconnect working like the other node is not there 
So you can't attack that kind of decentralized system. Though there's a hypothetic, uh, hypo, hypothetically, if you want to attack the blockchain or the system that the cryptocurrency is built on, you have to have what we call 51% control. That means what we call a 51% attack in the sense that you have to take control of 51% of the network for you to be able to say you are overpowering the entire blockchain, which is almost impossible. Where do you want to start from? From Nigeria, US, Russia, or wherever. It's almost impossible. So there is no central point of failure. If you want to attack crypto here, it's going to regenerate in another place. So it's very decentralized. So this is a very broad space, but you can learn the basic enough, the basic of buy and sell to be able to make money from. Um, trading, normal trading, either you're trading, you're investing, or you're, you're, or you're staking. Staking is one of passive incomes, of which I will show you how to do that using OKS Jumpstart tomorrow, in tomorrow's class. So today, do you have any questions today? I'll answer your question. If you have any questions, I'll attend to the questions based on everything I've said now. This video will be made available after this class. For those of you that want to rewatch it, I'll put it on my YouTube channel and you can rewatch it and all that. If you want other videos, there are other videos on my YouTube channel that will really teach you other things that you would like to know. So if you have a question for anything I just said, if you want to know more about different kinds of parts of the cryptocurrency, there are some videos available for you to, to watch on my YouTube channel and all that. Of course, for those in my premium channel, I'm going to upgrade their class to all this whole DeFi thing going on and then the youth farming stuff and all that. Because in this space, this keep, the money-making strategies continues to evolve. So in that way, you have to continue to keep up to date with stuff in order to leverage and then maximize your purchases in this space. But you can, if you're a very busy person, you can just make passive income, follow the trend, and then be in a community like mine, and then you maximize the opportunities there. But please, don't, if you're going to enter, be a part of any pyramid scheme or Ponzi scheme or anything, make sure that you're doing it from a place of knowledge, not because someone try to get you to be the person's downline. Because, of course, if you tell someone else who can do poses, it's really like as if you don't want the person to, have, to make money. But make sure you're doing it from a place of knowledge. Make sure you know every detail that you need to do about crypto. I know that that is not really part of crypto. They're just building stuff around crypto. So that is all for today. If you have any questions, I will answer your questions. And make sure you you follow the options B or C to get access to my premium groups. And then anybody that says the last day of the, this thing will get one, one very lucky person will get the bonus that I said person will get. So any questions? Any questions? Any questions? Any questions? Any questions? Any questions? If you have, if you don't have any questions, the video will be made available. All right. The video made available, and of course there are other videos too that talk about this extensively. And of course, there are other most basic videos. You want to really learn more about the blockchain. I didn't really deviate into blockchain also because that's a very major part. The blockchain is part, cryptocurrency is just a part of the blockchain. Cryptocurrency is just a part of the blockchain. So you need to learn more about what the blockchain has to offer. But I know most of us want to learn just how to trade and all that. Remember, in this space, information is power. Information and knowledge, information, knowledge and time gives you the power and the leverage you need 
to be able to monetize and maximize the space. So, on my YouTube channel, just type Valley Curve. Don't worry, I'll send a link to the group. I'll send a link to the group to my YouTube channel so you just see them. Then this one, I'll upload it to my YouTube too and make it accessible in some minutes. So, all right. You're welcome. So um, you get the videos or you just go to YouTube and just type Valley Cup, V-A-L-U-C-O-P. You will see the videos and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I'll make this particular video available as soon as I can. So thank you for being a part of this class. Tomorrow we'll continue. I'll talk about how to make, how to use more, use little to make more using OKS Jumpstart and then how to, um, I'll explain the risk in this space detail because as you have to be equipped with information to know what you need to do. The risk, the portfolio management, how to maximize your profit. We'll do that tomorrow. And round up. And then we'll know before Sunday, we'll know who those are qualified to be in my premium group for free. You're not paying me any money. All you have to just fund, just fund your account with the money that you have used, this chance expires by Sunday. All right. Good night. Thanks for being, thanks for being a part of this class tonight. So, you are, you are all welcome. Good night.